Are you an administrative professional who finds it challenging to set boundaries in the workplace? Welcome to Setting Boundaries for Administrative Professionals. My name is Dr. Mary Ritz. I am the founder and owner of a company called Almenta International. Almenta International focuses on three main areas. Number one, leadership development. Number two, customer relationship management. And number three, team development. Under team development, I focus on different areas. So today we are focusing on setting boundaries specifically for administrative professionals. I have created a short agenda for you that I believe will be beneficial. Let's look at what's in the agenda for you today. Number one, we are going to discuss understanding the importance of setting boundaries. Number two, developing boundary setting skills. And then number three, practical application, which means I'm going to give you some statements that you can use in different relationships. Let's get started. Why do boundaries matter? Number one, they promote respect and understanding between you and your colleagues. Number three, because you set boundaries, you actually are promoting your individual well-being. And guess what? If you set boundaries that are beneficial for you and also for others, it gives you the sense of autonomy. And we know that for you to be happy in the workplace, to be engaged in the workplace, to stay motivated, you need some power, you need some autonomy. Number four, it facilitates healthy dependence. So yes, I am dependent on other people, but guess what? I've got my boundaries as well. So I don't feel like I'm gonna be taken advantage of in some relationships. And then number five, it cultivates professional growth. The ability to be assertive, to be confident, to communicate, what it is that you need and what it is works for you actually gives you the ability to grow into that next level professional that you intend to be. So that's high level, the benefit of setting boundaries. On the whole picture, it means that if we've got boundaries, we've got better relationships in the workplace. It means productivity, high engagement, better team culture and a bigger picture. Now that we've understood why boundaries matter, let's ask you this very critical question as an administrative professional. Why may you find it very challenging to set boundaries in the workplace? What holds you back? What frustrates you or what's your fear? Is it people pleasing? Is it because you are afraid of repercussions? What sort of repercussions? are you afraid of? I'm gonna give you some time just to think about that. You as an administrative professional, what is it that you find challenging in terms of setting boundaries in the workplace? Write it down, jot it down. Yes, I wanna encourage you, if you've got somewhere to write, whether it's a gadget, the typical notebook, please find somewhere to write. Now that you've unpacked that, let's move on to understand why sometimes we find it very difficult to express our boundaries, to express our needs. Number one, let's look at the high expectations in the workplace. If we look at organizations, they're competing for the market. They're competing for customers. They're wanting to accelerate their profits. That comes at a cost. It comes at a of productivity high performance. Hence, sometimes expectations that are imposed on team players can really be strenuous, so to speak. So is that the reason maybe that you're failing to express your limitations or your boundaries because the expectations in the workplace are just too much? How do you even say enough when there's so much that is expected of you, right? I also want to say pressure to please others. So you can't say no. 
why is that you have a sense that you need to please others? Is it because you want to be accepted? Is it because you want to have a sense of belonging? Or there's something that is an underlying currents that causes you to want to please other people? We've already alluded to repercussions. Do you feel like if you say no, or if you set those boundaries, you will not get the next promotion, or you will not be invited to participate in that project that you want to be a part of. Maybe you feel that as an administrative professional, you're there to support. You don't really have the authority to set your own boundaries or to ask for things that you need so that you're an effective team player. What is it? All these things or all these ideas could be the reason why you're not setting your boundaries. I may not have included everything here, but as you're going through this, I'd like you to go through a journey of understanding yourself, bringing some self-awareness and understand why it is so difficult for you to set boundaries. I'll give you some minutes there to think about it, to reflect on these questions. Now we're gonna talk about what I call pitfalls. It's one thing to have no ability to express your boundaries. It's another thing to have the idea, to know that you do deserve to speak, to express your boundaries. But when you do it, maybe you do it in an ineffective way. This is what I call the pitfalls of setting boundaries. What are they? What do they look like? Let's jump in. The first one is apologizing excessively. So you set the boundary, but then you apologize for it. This may signal to others that your boundaries are flexible and not essential. And we're not implying that boundaries cannot be flexible. They can be. But if you apologize upfront, I'm sorry, I need to do this. I'm sorry, I'm asking you to do this. And then you excessively apologize. You're showing to others, to your boss, to your manager, to your leader, to your team, that you're very flexible and your boundaries are not as essential or as important to you and the team. That's number one. Then number two, setting boundaries that are too rigid. They're so rigid that they are contrary to the work culture. They are contrary to the values of the organization or of the team. These actually now, if you set them, they will isolate you from the rest of the team. Sometimes they are so self-centered that they're not considering the team. That's where the isolation comes into place. Okay. Number three, not communicating early. Waiting until you're overwhelmed, you're drowning in work, and then you put up your hand when it's too late. That can become confrontational or bring conflict because you would have said yes, and then all of a sudden you can't do it. Now it breeds a lack of trust. The other thing that I've also seen professionals do is that when they get that first job, that first opportunity to dive into an organization that they've been dying to work for or in a team that they've been dying to work with, they overpromise. They say, yes, I can do it. They just take it all, take it all, take it all out of enthusiasm. And then you set an expectation that you do take this kind of work. Then down the line, three months down the line, when reality has sunk in, you realize you've overpromised and now you're under delivering. Those are some of the things that we need to look at. Then number four, over justifying or over explaining. What do we mean by that? You over justify why you're setting the boundary and you're over explaining the reason why you need it, right? Please, you take away the legitimacy of that boundary. So again, let's avoid these four pitfalls. Number one, over-apologizing. Number two, setting boundaries that are too rigid and maybe self-centered. Number three, not communicating early. And number four, over-justifying or over-explaining. Those are the pitfalls that I'd like us to avoid. Now we've done objective number one, which is really understanding why boundaries matter. I'd like you to take your pen, take your gadget and respond to some of these questions. 
Number one, in what areas have you been successful in terms of setting boundaries? What has been the outcome within that success? Think about it. Then number two, what areas still need to be worked on, need enhancement? Then number three, how has not setting boundaries affected your work and relationships? What are the outcomes? What are the results? Do you feel like you're less engaged? You're less productive? You feel like your opinions don't matter? You feel excluded? You don't feel heard? What has that done? How has that affected? affected you or impacted you, right? That was objective number one. Now let's move on to objective number two. Let's see how it feeds on from the understanding that we actually need to set boundaries. Fostering healthy boundaries. Now we are creating the skill sets that we need in terms of developing healthy boundaries. I provide here five strategies for you. But it does not mean that we only have five strategies. There could be others, but today we are focusing on five strategies. Number one, we want you to have the ability to communicate clearly. When we talk about communicating, is the ability to communicate with your leader, your boss, and the teammates that you work with. Communicate your boundaries with respect, with assertiveness, so to speak. Explain why they're important to you and how, if they are obeyed or respected, they will benefit you and how you contribute to the team. Again, here, we want to be very, very careful. As you are communicating, yes, they're important to you. But if they are important to you and they benefit you, how is the team going to benefit in the long term? How is your manager, your leader, your boss going to benefit in the long term? So you sell the idea as you're lifting the entire ship up, not only you. Number two, set limits. Set clear limits on what you are willing and unwilling to accept, to tolerate in a relationship. So for those that have followed my work, I shared in one of the webinars that I had a boss that just used to scream at me, just literally scream at me. He could never speak with me with a natural voice. Everything that came out was very harsh, demeaning, and I failed to express myself, to say, I will not tolerate that language. Once you express what you can tolerate and what you cannot tolerate, you wanna be consistent in that behavior, in that request, you cannot be treated in a certain way, retaliate against it or say, no, that's not how I want to be treated. But then tomorrow you accept it. Maybe you accept it from other team players or other people. You've got to be consistent in the way that you respond to this behavior that you're trying to set boundaries around. Right. But also be willing to listen to the other's perspective. Though you're setting your limits, I'd like you, please, to listen to what the others are saying about that boundary that you've set. How is it going to affect them or the entire team? That also leads me now to number three, which is respect. Respect others' boundaries, which means that if these boundaries that I'm setting for myself are very, very important to me, I also need to understand that my boss, my leader, my teammates have their boundaries as well. What are they? What can I do to support those boundaries? Number four, practice self-care. So prioritizing your self-care. In other words, you cannot keep saying yes, yes, yes to projects or to work when it's really taking away from your well-being, right? By setting these boundaries, you're helping yourself first as well, okay? Then number five, seek support. Some of these things have got underlying currencies that family members, therapist, a mentor, a leader, or a coach can help you uncover. Like you've got a sense of pleasing other people all the time. You always want to meet other people's boundaries, but not yours. Why is that? 
you may need to prolong this journey and really go on a journey of understanding who you are at the heart and what your limitations are. Then people will help you unpack that and help you giving you the right skill sets. This is a start. This is an introduction, but your journey does not end in this particular session. We've talked about five strategies. Number one, communicate clearly. Number two, set limits. Number three, respect others' boundaries. Number four, practice self-care. And number five, seek support. Right. Now we've talked about understanding boundaries and why they matter. And I've also provided you with five strategies of how you can build healthy boundaries, how you can communicate them. We are going to go to the latter, which is the practical skill. But before we do that, I would like you to think about this. Self-awareness is a gateway to true transformation. If you want to change, if you want to start building boundaries that are healthy, you need to understand about you. Who are you? Self-awareness. It does not end at self-awareness. Then you put some tools in place to true transformation. What are we saying here? We are saying that you have to understand your own needs, your own limits, your own values. It's very, very critical for you to do that. Knowing what you can tolerate and accept, why you cannot and why, helps you define the boundaries. So who are you? What are your needs? What are your limitations? What are your values? What are you willing to tolerate? And what are you willing not to tolerate? How then will you take that and start to build your own boundaries? Let's dive into objective number three, practical application. When we are talking about practical application, we're talking about two perspectives. I'm going to give you statements that you can use to address the first perspective, your leadership boss relationship. Number two, I'm going to give you practical statements that you can use to manage your relationships with your colleagues. With time, I would also add in with customers, but not for today. Today, we're going to focus on the leader and we're going to focus on their colleagues. Let's dive in. So with your leader, with your manager, with your boss, whichever phrase that you use, I'm going to give you in terms of time and workload management. Your leader has got an expectation that he's going to give you a whole lot of work. Now, workload is overwhelming you. You're now working very, very long hours. This is a statement that you can practically use. I would like to discuss our priorities for the week to ensure I can manage my workload effectively. Can we set aside some time each Monday morning to review and prioritize the tasks uh, I have now? I always get this question, Mary, how do I say no to my manager when he's overwhelming me or when she's overwhelming me with work? How do I say no without sounding like I'm not a team player, not a great support? This is what you can say. You've got to be able to articulate, to have the confidence to say this. Remember when you communicate, your voice matters, your assertiveness, your confidence, your body language matters. That is all part of communication. Time management, this is what I propose that you state or you speak as or you answer or you respond to. You use this. But again, you can tweak this depending on your personality and also depending on your manager's or your leader's personality. Number two, work hours. I generally finish work at 5 p.m. to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Is there anything urgent that needs to be addressed before then? That's when, you know, you sort of are managing your manager or your leader, your boss, who is sending emails and wanting reports at 10 p.m. or at 11 p.m. at night. You can do this. Number three, handling interruptions. This is when your manager says or your leader says, you're interrupting me. Uh, and yet you're working on his work or her work, right? And, they, and then they say you're interrupting them. This is what you can say. I understand your time is valuable. Is there a preferred method for me to approach you with questions or issues that arise during the day? Again, you can take these statements and tweak them. This is how you can address 
and set your boundary with your boss or with your leader. Now, let's understand how you can set boundaries with your colleagues. Maybe you're working across projects. This is something that you can say, I'm open to collaborating on projects and I need to discuss and agree on clear roles and responsibility. You're really open to collaborating, but you also need to discuss clear roles because it's going to get confusing. There's always power in stating your boundaries by starting with something that is positive, affirming, that brings commonality, that brings people together. That is not self-centered. So you state it and then you come with your ask. Then number two, I appreciate your input and I need to express my opinions and ideas as well. This is where you are dealing with a manager, with a leader, who does not give you the time to express what you think is just one way dimension communication or team members that just want you to be there and then they just take over. You start off with positive affirming, I appreciate, then you bring in your ask. That's setting boundaries with your colleagues. I'm going to ask you, what other boundaries, what other statements could you add to these two? So we have covered Three main things, understanding why boundaries matter. We've done five strategies around building boundaries. And again, we've given you some statements, practical tools on how you can address these matters with your boss and with your teammates. Now it's time to journal. That piece of paper, that journal book that you're using, or whatever gadget you're using. Identify your boundaries that you'd like to set with your colleagues, leaders, and even with your customers. Identify those, write them down. As we are now concluding, I'm gonna encourage you to develop a personal action plan for setting the boundary. Then set specific goals and timelines. You can use the SMART goals framework. SMART, standing for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Again, thank you for your time. In conclusion, boundaries really matter for your own productivity, your own health, a dynamic workforce, employee engagement. I gave you some skill sets in terms of how then do you set these boundaries, communicating clearly and being consistent, knowing yourself and exactly what you want, not being too rigid, the practical application, I gave you some tools. I gave you some statements that you can use with your manager, boss, and colleagues. I wish you the best on this journey. You need this as a professional, as an administrative professional. I'm here to support you. My name is Dr. Mary Ritz. I am the president of Aumenta International. Here are my contact details. You can email me and I'll be glad to respond. Thank you so much. All the best in setting your health boundaries. <music>